For more than two decades, Pulitzer Prize winning writer Dave Barry made us laugh with his syndicated weekly column. He gave that up five years ago, and now this best selling author of more than 30 books has written one more called I'll Mature When I'm Dead. Dave Barry's amazing tales of adulthood. <laughs> And Dave Barry is with us this morning. Good morning. Hi, Harry. Did you enjoy the fish segment? I don't know why we got to make the piranhas angrier at us than they already are. Like, if the piranhas watching this show, they're thinking, wait till he gets in the water. You know, they, don't, they can't tell us apart. I was, just, I was not one of the people doing that to the piranhas. Exactly. Okay. Imagine if the piranhas are at the gym. Right. As they're they working out, are. working their jaws. Exactly right. And they're watching this segment, and they're like, why is he messing yeah. with one of us? We got enough trouble with the piranhas, exactly. is my feeling. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Um, I have to tell you, I was reading this, uh, your book in the cab yesterday, and I'm laughing out loud, and the cab driver says, what's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun-loving New York cabbie, wasn't it's it? A fun, it's a fun book. It's oh, a thank really, you. really good ride. Yeah. And we miss you. We miss having you in the paper all the well, time. I, I, I don't miss it that much, having the deadline. <laughs> but what I found is that people come up, I have two kinds of people. Some people come and say, I really miss your column. But what scares me is that a lot of people come up and say, I really love your column every week, which I, I don't know. I just read it Sunday. I don't know what they're reading. <laughs> it's, like it's not in there anymore. There but anyway. uh, one of the interesting things at the beginning of the book is you talk a lot about the difference between men and women. And we have two important holidays heading our way. Yeah. Mother's Day. Yeah. Sunday. Father's Day in another month or so. What do women typically say to men, their sons, their husbands, about Mother's Day? They lie. Women lie. They say, oh, I don't want anything special. You don't need to make a fuss, which mm -hmm. is, of course, a any man who believes that is a fool. What right. they mean is, I don't want to tell you, but it better be a major fuss. Whereas when a man, and this is most men, when they say, I really don't want anything for Father's Day. I just want to lie on a sofa and go to sleep and, you know, in front of professional yeah. golf. He means it. He doesn't want any. He doesn't want to go out. He doesn't want flowers. He doesn't want anything. Yeah. Women lie. So Women like, want what you called, I wrote this down specifically, festivities. They want festivities. They want <laughs> things and flowers and candles that are really huge and, and smell. That's what they want. They, yeah. don't, they don't want you to not pay attention yeah. on Mother's Day. And in, the, in this writing about the differences between men and women, you have really reduced it. It's all about DNA, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, our, our DNA um, wants to replicate itself. And yeah. for women, that means they have to find a guy and, and you know, settle down and, and have a baby and take care of the baby till it can stand on its own two feet, which today is about 35 years old. <laughs> Men just want to spread their DNA all over the place and just move along. They are singular in their obsession, yeah. and this is this is highly scientific. I'm not sure yeah, where you manage to get these graphics from, but this is this is the difference between male and female. Yeah, woman DNA, DNA on, top, is on there, the top, and a man DNA on the bottom. See, we're simpler. <laughs> we're more basic. We're more like a volleyball in our DNA structure. A volleyball that has one quest. One qu yeah, to mate with any woman or reasonably soft object. Or other volleyball. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah whatever. Right. <laughs> We're not that picky. <laughs> is, it, is it odd for you to not have the grind, to not have the deadline all the time? No, it's actually very nice to not have the, the deadline. Um, but, I mean, when, when I wrote this book, it was more because of, you know, a topic would come up and that I really like to write about that and take mm -hmm. some time and spread out a little bit. So yeah. it was kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, among the other topics in the book, uh, you find yourself going to dance recitals? I do. I, um, I have a uh, daughter, Sophie, and she's uh, been in dance. And I don't mind going to a dance recital to watch my daughter dance. Uh -huh. I just don't want to watch every the, you know, the daughter of every other person in North America dance, which is, <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been to a dance recital, but it lasts eight years. In a, and if you don't think that's possible in a single afternoon, because you don't know dance recital time, where everything slows way down. <laughs> And now, we got, you know, say so you're watching all these. Uh, and by the time your daughter gets up there, you don't know what she looks like anymore. Right. You know? She's gone through several phases of puberty or something. It could be a different daughter altogether. And, and there are specific clothes that have to be worn at the dance recital. They, well, they, first of all, they, they make them wear uh, an enormous amount of makeup because God knows, you know, nine and ten year old girls with perfect complexions need a lot of makeup in their hair, you know, <laughs> nuclear hair gel on them, you know. Uh, you also, w w were you not involved in a wedding uh, uh, sometime? My recently? son, my son Rob got married uh, yeah. to a wonderful woman named Laura here in New York. And it was great, except for the, the, the if, basically, the, the, the bridal, bridal industry convinces women of, of that, you know, they, they say three basic things. Your wedding is the most important day of your life, and it has to be perfect. Right. But it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Right. But if it doesn't, it will suck. 
You know, so they <laughs> basically you you end up spending a, you know yeah. money as a lot. And and if, and if in the case of your son, what was the most important thing for him to know going into this? Well, that the, he really was kind of an appendage. He was like you know like a the, the Remora eel on the shark. He had he was like a distant planet in the galaxy around, rotating around, orbiting around Laura. And his opinion counted for? Nothing. Zero. Like if, if men, if that's when women say, well, wait, I want the, the bride always says, and there's another way women lie. I want, you know, you're just as important as I am in the wedding. <laughs> if men's views count at all in weddings, there will be a lot more weddings involving go-karts or ski ball. <laughs> you know, there'd be a lot more fun things happening in weddings. And what, you know what? Wouldn't that be a great wedding? It would. Wouldn't it would it be a paintball wedding. Yeah, the guy might not remember to show up as the thing. <laughs> But he'd oversleep. It, you know, he's really independent. <laughs> women, women, if the, when it comes down to the, they'll marry anybody. They'll marry, they'll marry, they'll marry, they'll marry a member of the catering staff if they have to. The wedding will go on. The wedding will. Madonna go on. did that several times. <laughs> This is such a funny book. I am so happy to have had it uh, arrive uh, on my desk. I'm happy for ago. you, Harry. Well, I'm here I, to make you happy. Well, I, you certainly you have succeeded. Thank you. Dave Barry, thanks so much. A lot happens early on The Early Show. Weekday mornings on CBS.